Hi guys, this is Andrew Burgess, and I've got a neat little quick tip for you today. So, if you're if you use a lot of social network websites like Twitter or Google Plus or probably Facebook, although I'm not sure because I'm not on Facebook, but you'll notice that you've got a text box where, or specifically, you've got a text area element where you can type your message, your status, your update, whatever. And when you hit enter, you get um, an actual like a line break in the text you're writing. However, uh, when you hit Control Enter, a lot of them will uh, submit the text um, when you hit Control Enter, which will be the uh, equivalent of pressing their little post or update or submit button. So I want to show you how to do this uh, relatively simple but pretty neat functionality. So I've got an HTML page here pretty simple I've added some CSS that we're not going to talk about so let's jump right into the body here so let's um, start by just creating a text area we're gonna give it an ID of message and then let's uh, create a button of uh, type submit and we're just going to call this post now of course um, if this were a real uh, website you'd want to um, wrap these inside a form tag probably and make this an official form and um, also give it the ability to submit without using uh, JavaScript. You have to be able to uh, support that just in case your uh, clients do not have JavaScript turned on. However, in our example, we're going to do something very simple. We're just going to talk about actually wiring up the control enter event handler. We're not actually going to uh, do any real submission to a web server or something like that. So here is the file, and this is what we've got, just a simple text box and our post button. Okay, so let's see what we need to do. Well, the first thing we want to do is, um, let me, we want to require jQuery, and then let's open up another script tag here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a jQuery plugin that I'm going to call uh, Control Enter. Okay, and this will be a function, of course. And the way this function is going to work is we're going to call it on the element that will get Control Enter. Now there are a couple ways, of course, you could do this in jQuery. This is the way we're going to do it. You could use custom events, um, like with the trigger and bind methods. We're going to do it this way because it's a bit simpler. So this Control Enter plugin will be called on an element and when, which will be our, our text area element. And then we're gonna take two parameters here. So first is going to be a uh, string that could have one or more uh, CSS selectors, which are gonna be buttons that we want this function to be called on as well. And then we're gonna pass the function. So let me just say that again here. The control enter, well, let me show you how we'll do it. I'll wire it up down here. So let's get our, we get our message text area and we're going to call control enter on that just like you'd call a, the click event on a button or something like that and then when we this is going to take two parameters the first one is any buttons that we want the same action to occur on now you can add a lot of flexibility into this so that we don't have to pass any buttons or just pass null or something like that in our case we're going to pass in uh, just button as the selector for the button and then we're going to type a function in here now uh, an alternate way to do this would be to not accept any buttons just to put this function outside of here and just give the function itself to both the um, as a click event on the button and then as our new control enter function here on the message so that's how that's going to be wired up so now in here what are we going to do well the first thing we want to do is uh, let's create a few variables here we'll create a variable uh, viz which will just be the jQuery-fied version of this text box that we get, which is this inside of the function. Um, I think that's kind of neat, T-H-I-Z, to, uh, as a, instead of calling it self or that or something like that. I saw that on Twitter this week from Jeremy McPeak, another author here on NetTuts. Okay, then we have, um, we're gonna have buttons, which is just going to be uh, buttons, like that. And actually, because buttons is a, uh, parameter we don't have to assign it with the ver. Okay, so we have those. Now what are we going to do? Well, let's create 
I'm going to create a function here um, called perform action. And very simply, what this is going to do is it's going to take the function that was passed to uh, our, our function parameter up here that was passed to the uh, control enter plugin, and we're going to call it passing this our text box as the uh, as the context as this inside that function. Okay, now to the text area, we're going to bind a the an event or bind a function to the key down event, and this function is going to take that event object. Now if we wanted to, and it's probably probably would be a good idea for this perform action function to take the event and pass it as a parameter to the function that gets passed in. So let's do that as well. All right, so here. So let's say if e dot key down, and actually no, sorry, if e dot key code equals 13. So what does this mean? Well, when you press a key, and fire an event. So when we're typing in the text area, the key down event will fire every time we press a key. That could be a key that gives us a, a character, such as a letter or number or the enter key for a new line, or it could be a key, another key like one of the uh, modifier keys, or not the modifier key, but like uh, one of the F function keys or something like that. So it so happens that every key has a key code and the key code for the enter key is 13. So uh, but we want to check to see that there is a key code 13 and e dot control key. So control key is another property on the event function, I'm sorry, on the event object, that if the control key is being held down when the key down event is fired, then that will be true, otherwise it will be false. So basically what that if statement is saying is if enter and control are both being pressed. All right. If that happens, we want to perform an action, and then we want to uh, use the prevent default method to prevent the actual carriage return from being uh, registered, or from the, from the new line from actually taking place. Because if we don't do that, it's going to perform this action, and then it will actually still put a new line because we're pressing the enter key. All right, so that is our binding on this. Now, just for the um, array of buttons that we pass, in this case it's only one, when those buttons are clicked, we also want to perform the action. You might be wondering why we couldn't just pass the function uh, here, pass the function that we get as a parameter here and here, instead of wrapping it in a perform action. And that's because if we did pass it here or here, the value of this would be different here Oops. The value of this would refer to the text area here, and the value of this would refer to the buttons in here. So by wrapping it this way and passing, oops, by wrapping it this way and passing this t h i z as the parameter, uh, or as the context to the call as a parameter to the call function, which defines the context for the call to f n, uh, we can be sure that it's always going to have the same result every time. All right, so we can make sure this is working by uh, just, well, let's just alert uh, test here, just to make sure that's working. So if we come down here to the browser, let's refresh it, then I can be typing text here, I can hit enter, nothing happens, but when I hold the control key down and print S, enter, we get a JavaScript alert that says test. Okay, so that's working, but let's do something more useful here. Let's uh, normally, this would do something ajax -y to send it to the browser, or sorry, to send it to the server, get it put into a database, update your status, whatever. Right now, we're going to do something a little simpler. Let's use some jQuery here. Let's create a new paragraph element, and we're going to append uh, this, which in this case refers to the uh, text area, remember, this.val which will get us the text that is in there. Then we're going to replace uh, every occurrence of a new line with um, a break tag. And obviously you could do this however you choose to do. We're just doing something simple here. And then we're going to prepend uh, the paragraph to the uh, document.body. 
that's pretty simple. So if I refresh this page here, you could see uh, we can type a message, and I can hit Control Enter, and it gets submitted. Ah, now we're not clearing the text area, so we should do that as well. Let's come back up here, and just note here we're going to say this dot val equals nothing, just like that. Now if I refresh this, uh, this is um, message Control Enter, and there you go. This is another message, and I can press the post button, and that works. This is a message with several line breaks in it, and that appears just as we would expect it to. So there you go. We're submitting a little update form here with Control Enter, while still allowing us to use just Enter to have uh, line breaks in our text. So I hope you like that. Uh, thanks for watching.